Calda. Bene, beh, di nuovo grazie a tutti per essere qui, è un piacere e un onore essere a, in un istituto così importante e con una tradizione così uh, ben stabilita nel tempo. La sala è bellissima e, e vorrei ringraziare prima di tutto il professor Prete Rossi e il professor Tarizzo per aver reso possibile questo evento e vorrei ringraziare anche tutti gli amici e colleghi che sono qui oggi e un ringraziamento particolare al professore Esposito. Questo seminario uh, avrà come tema principale la biopolitica ed è anche un modo per uh, mostrare uh, il tipo di lavoro che si fa sulla, sulla biopolitica fuori dall'Italia, ma sempre in stretto dialogo con la tradizione, con la tradizione italiana. E il professor Prosorov, che insegna all'Università eh, di Juvascula, che è un, un ottimo centro di um, eh, scienze politiche e filosofia continentale, in, in Finlandia si è occupato molto uh, di biopolitica, infatti ha diretto due progetti per eh, Academy of Finland, l'Accademia finlandese, il primo sulla biopolitica dello stalinismo e il secondo sulla relazione tra biopolitica e democrazia. E questi due progetti sono andati dal, rispettivamente dal 2010 al 2015 e dal 2015 al 2019. Ed è anche autore di nove monografie, non le elencherò tutte ma almeno le più, le più rilevanti per il tema di oggi, che sono Biopolitics of the Truth, eh, Democratic Biopolitics, Biopolitics of Stalinism, eh, un'introduzione al lavoro di Agamben uscita per Edinburgh University Press nel 2016 e poi lavori, eh, i primi lavori su uh, The Ethics of Post-Communism and Understanding the Conflict between Russia and the EU. E il tema di oggi sarà eh, quello del realismo biopolitico, è un lavoro, un work in progress e, e quindi, beh, without further ado, I leave the floor to Sergei, so please, whenever you're ready. Thanks very much uh, Marco for the introduction <laughs> and thanks very much to the Institute for having me here, it's a great honor to speak uh, here today. And, um, Before we start, I would just like to say about interpretation and translation, I'm not very used to being interpreted. I'm used to being an interpreter in my previous life before venturing into academia. I worked for six or seven years as an interpreter for governmental institutions in Russia, so I'm very familiar with the work of the interpreter, but I don't think I've been interpreted myself. So if I get confused and I start trying to interpret Marco instead of saying something of my own, then please forgive. Uh, so, so, uh, quindi uh, Sergei ha interpretato molti, molti lavori e um, è stato interprete anche in molti, molti seminari di, di altri colleghi ma non, è, non si è mai trovato dall'altra parte della, uh, della muraglia per così dire quindi è un'esperienza nuova per lui e in parte lo è anche per me quindi è un esperimento, vediamo come va ma sono sicuro ci divertiremo All right. Thanks. And... Today uh, I would like to talk about uh, what is indeed a, a work in progress uh, that I entitled Towards a Biopolitical Realism and the indefinite article A is supposed to connote that uh, I'm not talking about some full-fledged theory but an option, a kind of tentative attempt to bring together the literature on biopolitics with the emerging literature on realism that uh, has been appearing in recent years. Quindi uh, quello che presenterò oggi non è una teoria compiuta ma è un lavoro in divenire che tenta di creare una, eh, un ponte tra due tradizioni del pensiero contemporaneo, la prima è la tradizione biopolitica e la seconda è quella eh, de del realismo, i dibattiti sul realismo in particolare aggiungerei io eh, che si sono svolti in Francia e nel, nel mondo anglofono. Quindi molto quelli di matrice più, più italiana, mentre invece la, la biopolitica è di matrice eh, per larga parte italiana. But uh, let us start with the picture. Yes, so it's a painting from Magritte called Golconda. And uh, what do we observe on this painting? Well, we see a bunch of men, most likely only men, it's hard to tell in the background. But those men 
we don't really know much about them. We know that they're probably not famous, so we may suggest that they are, instead of being famous, that they are instead infamous. So the starting point of uh, today's talk will have to do with uh, the essay by Michel Foucault, which is called The Life of Infamous Men. So let us think that it's about these men or these kinds of men that Foucault was writing about. Ecco, proprio a partire da questo um, quadro di Magritte si, si svilupperà quello che è il tema portante dell'incontro di oggi, che è una lettura critica di un testo cruciale di Foucault come quello uh, delle vite degli uomini, degli uomini infami. So, in this essay, Foucault discusses a variety of examples of lives briefly mentioned in certain governmental reports, police uh, dossiers, hospital records, letters of denunciation, etc., etc. So, the infamous men of the title are those who were briefly caught up in an encounter with power, and this encounter was again briefly reported on in certain governmental texts. Yes, so Foucault speaks of lightning existences. Yes, existences that have the duration of the flash of lightning. The uh, lowly lives reduced to ashes in the few phrases that destroyed them. Ecco, Foucault uh, ha come tema centrale di questo saggio del 77 l'esistenza degli uomini infami, che descrive come esistenze lampo, esistenze fulminee, perché vengono illuminati in un attimo dai dispositivi del potere per poi, per poi di nuovo scomparire nel, nelle ceneri della, della notte. And the only reason we are aware of those lives at all, which is an important point that uh, Foucault is going to return to again and again, the only reason that we know that those lives existed is the recording of those existences by the apparatus of power. Yes, so uh, in a quote here, what rescues them, the infamous men, from the darkness of night where they would and still should perhaps have been able to remain is an encounter with power. Yes, without that there wouldn't have been any reference to their existence. Quindi l'esistenza eh, di queste vite eh, ci è nota solamente eh, attraverso l'incontro che è avvenuto tra di esse e, e il potere, altrimenti non ne avremmo alcuna, alcuna contezza. So, with regard to that, Foucault wants to anticipate the criticism, which would be quite self-evident. The criticism uh, would go like this. Why don't you go and study those lives themselves, and not the recording of those lives by the apparatuses of power. But of course the response of Foucault is as self-evident as, I will argue later on, very problematic. Yes? So anticipating this kind of criticism, Foucault says, well, would anything at all remain for us of what they have been? Yes? If they had not at a given moment collided with power and provoked its forces. And then he makes a claim, uh, which is again just as problematic, and uh, perhaps not entirely credible. Is it not, says Foucault, one of the fundamental traits of our society that destiny takes the form of the relation to power? Yes. Of the struggle yes. along with or against it. Quindi, uh, e qui inizia la, la parte critica, la domanda che viene rivolta a Foucault è perché non studiare queste vite al di là della descrizione che di queste vite viene fatta del potere e la risposta che Foucault offre è eh, che è impossibile proprio perché eh, il, il destino di queste vite è legato a filo doppio al, al potere e da qui poi si sviluppa la, il punto di critica so, to continue with the same quote Foucault says that the most intent point of lives these lives the one where their energy is concentrated is precisely where they clash with power struggle with it, endeavor to utilize its forces or escape its traps. E quindi di nuovo la risposta di Foucault è studiare queste vite lì do, laddove queste vite collidono con il potere è uh, il punto di massima energia di queste vite e proprio per questa ragione è lì che bisogna indagare. Yeah. But 
I even haven't said all that, and again, the question of whether the most intense point of life is the encounter with power is the one that I would con consider very debatable. We must still bear in mind that even as those lives are illuminated by power, this illumination is certainly not voluntary. It's not like any of those people sought fame by clashing with power and having their lightning existences recorded by it. Yeah. Ecco, pur essendo uh, questo momento uh, di, di incontro tra le vite e il potere di indubbia importanza, va comunque detto che questo incontro è unilaterale, cioè il potere che incontra le vite non sono queste vite che uh, cercano di essere descritte, descritte dal potere. Quindi da qui si apre il limite che uh, Foucault, diciamo, uh, metodologicamente adotta nel suo studio. E Foucault riconosce it by twisting the familiar meaning of the word infamous, yes? So, who are infamous men in the everyday use of language? These are those, those who sought ill fame or bad fame by committing crimes that would become, as it were, legendary. People who would go down in history because of their cruelty or the, the vile nature of the crimes. But these men did nothing of the sort. Mostly they didn't even commit any crimes worthy of serious consideration. Their infamy is not ill fame, but the simple absence of fame. There's nothing, says Foucault, subsists of who they were or what they did, except in a few sentences. Quindi questi uomini non erano uomini di cattiva fama, ma eh, cito, nulla rimane di chi erano e di ciò che hanno fatto, tranne queste, queste poche frasi. Quindi non sono comparabili a tiranni, ad esempio, o a figure neg negative della storia, ma proprio perché esistono solo attraverso questi dispositivi non si può fare altro che studiare il loro incontro con il potere. So what we observe in this idea of infamy is, as Foucault says, the inversion of the idea of the legend. Right? What is a legend? It is a type of discourse that says too many things about the past, about the past heroes and their exploits. And it's very difficult to see what is true and what is false simply because there's way too much that is actually said. That's why reality and fiction end up confused and existence becomes legendary. Quindi queste persone appunto non sono persone leggendarie, ma Foucault in introduce la eh, categoria di anti-leggende, quindi so sono persone che non hanno alc alcuna leggenda, leggenda da, da raccontare. But in contrast, the governmental reports that Foucault cites are really scant. I mean, sometimes it's just a matter of a short sentence or a couple of sentences that do not report anything significant other than that a certain person was confined in prison for blasphemy or for doing some minor harm to their relative. So the very existence, yes, as Foucault says, becomes a matter of chance. It is by pure chance that those people have been arrested or confined and by pure chance that the knowledge of their existence has been transmitted to us in this very minimalist sense that is the very opposite of the legend. Yeah, I guess you can keep uh, going. Okay. So for Foucault, the very existence of this discourse of infamous men can be seen as perhaps a very small consolation for those men. Yes, the existence of the discourse about them can be seen as a revenge. Yes, let us, of course, as entertain the wish to see a revenge in this, this chance which allows these absolutely inglorious people to suddenly arise amid so many deaths, to invincibly gesticulate again, perhaps compensates for the misfortune which, has, which was brought down on them despite their modesty and anonymity. So, proprio perché, um queste persone che non hanno alcuna, alcuna fama, non vi è nulla di leggendario secondo Foucault nelle loro vite, hanno l'opportunità eh, assolutamente contingente, no? a question of chance, eh, di, essere, di essere registrate dal potere, eh, hanno anche modo di, eh, se volete, eh, avere una queste sono le parole di Foucault, una curiosa vendetta eh, del destino, proprio perché entrano in un certo senso nella storia pur non avendo alcuna eh, ragione di esservi, in questo, in questo lampo di luce che è acceso dai dispositivi uh, del potere che ne registra la loro esistenza. Again, I can leave you to 
reflect on whether this compensation is indeed sufficient or not, but uh, we can then move on. So what is at stake? No, yeah. tra translate this because it's important. And uh, quindi si tratta anche di capire se uh, quanto uh, Foucault chiama una vendetta sia veramente una vendetta e se sia fatta veramente giustizia a queste, a queste persone. Yeah. So what is at stake in this essay, I would argue, is ultimately the status of the reality that is the object of government. Yes? So on the one hand, we're dealing with the the, in these texts, we're dealing with the governmental construction of its object, yes, those infamous men, who are constructed through the procedures familiar from Foucault's work besides uh, this essay, such as examination, evaluation, interrogation, and other sort of objectifying procedures. But on the other hand, all these procedures were only deployed because those subjects, the men that will become infamous, were deemed, rightly or wrongly, to be a threat to power, to pose a certain threat to power, to be a danger to it, to resist it, etc., etc. So the question that is ultimately at stake is whether we're dealing with the constructs of government or the agents that could be seen as external, autonomous, and for that reason threatening for it. Ecco, quindi si tratta di capire chi è il soggetto di questa storia che Foucault ci racconta, ovvero se queste vite siano delle costruzioni uh, prodotte dai dispositivi di potere o se invece vi sia uh, un agente, usando una parola per molti versi problematica, una sorta di volontà o comunque un soggetto al di là delle, delle descrizioni che vengono, che vengono offerte eh, dal potere, cioè di, di chi sta parlando, di cosa sta parlando Foucault quando ci racconta queste vite, di una costruzione o di un soggetto, mm. sempre che si mm. possa tracciare, aggiungo io una distinzione tra due, ma poi sarà interessante discutere nel dibattito. So Foucault is here grappling with this question of the relation of discourse and reality. He wants to say, as he also does in numerous other texts, that what he analyzes, which is ultimately documents, are not merely documents. They don't merely document certain struggles, certain realities, certain agents, etc. So what shall be read there, says Foucault, is not a collection of portraits. So these documents do not describe anything. They are themselves fragments of reality. So there are snares, weapons, cries, gestures, attitudes, ruses, intrigues for which the word have been the instruments. Real lives have been played out in these few sentences. So these discourses, says Foucault, have really affected lives. These existences have effectively been risked and lost in these words. Ecco, allora, e qui c'è effettivamente forse una un'ambiguità un, un del, uh, de, del testo foucaultiano perché Foucault parla come uh, appena detto Sergei di, di frammenti di, frammenti, uh, di, uh, di, 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 di realtà e, e quindi di nuovo eh, si, tratta, si tratta di capire se uh, questi frammenti di realtà siano dei frammenti di realtà completamente costruiti dai discorsi o se invece colgono qualcosa che sta oltre i discorsi stessi. But and here I'm getting to perhaps the key point uh, of this of this talk it is easy to agree or credit to Foucault the point that these discourses had effects. If they said that somebody was confined in the mental hospital perhaps that's that's what happened. Yes? But it is very difficult to see the effects of these discourses being anything but negative. The citations that Foucault includes in the essays usually concern people who were quite literally confined or arrested for whatever misdeeds uh, or misbehaviors. People sent to the hospital or to prison. We do not get any evidence of any attempt at the transformation of the existences uh, of these people, but a simply negative operation of confinement. It is therefore very surprising to read at the end of this essay, Foucault returning to and kind of rehashing the argument that he made in the book published the same year, which was the first volume of the history of sexuality, where of course he famously advanced his idea of the productivity of power. 
So in The Lives of Infamous Men, he concludes how simple and easy it would be, no doubt, to dismantle power if it only worked to supervise, to spy upon, to sneak upon, to prohibit, and to punish. But, he says, it incites, instigates, produces. It isn't simply eye and ear. It brings about speech and action. Ecco, allora, la questione, e poi questo anticipa già la slide successiva, è che cosa sia il potere, perché è chiaro che questi uh, discorsi hanno degli effetti, hanno degli effetti di realtà. Però allo stesso tempo, uh, per come um, Sergei legge il testo di Foucault, questi effetti sembrano essere di carattere negativo. E, ed è quindi uh, sorprendente leggere nelle pagine finali uh, del saggio uh, eh, di Foucault la, la familiare insistenza che l'autore tende a, ehm, a, a porre sull'idea di produttività, eh, produttività eh, di, de, del potere, perché pare che in realtà que questa re registrazione delle vite degli infami, pur creando de delle categorie che hanno degli effetti, comunque rimanga in un certo senso passiva, senza esserci una forte... Uh, 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 componente attiva di produttività del potere stesso. Mm. Yeah. But when reading this essay, I do not see any examples of this productivity. Mm. On the contrary, I see, to return to Foucault's citation, I see the power that seeks to supervise, to spy upon, to sneak upon, to prohibit and to punish. Nothing else. Quindi si tratta di punire, uh, di controllare, uh, e questi vanno categorizzati eh, questi effetti secondo Sergei vanno categorizzati nel, 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 nella, nel, nel rovescio negativo del potere quindi uh, so, sono effetti che in realtà non producono, in realtà non creano ma semplicemente si uh, limitano usando una ripetizione scusatemi a, a, a limitare ma non, non tanto a creare we never find out about any of those infamous men being successfully reformed or transformed by power after this confinement or as a result of a convincing conversation with a representative of power. We do not know of any of those men changing their ways and restored, being restored to the society. Rather than being reformed, transformed or simply formed by power in any way, they are simply seized and confined by it in a fashion which is most unproductive. Ecco, quindi non c'è, uh, a detta di Sergei, un atto di uh, trasformazione e di creazione di questi soggetti da parte del potere. Quindi questi soggetti non vengono uh, reinseriti, uh, ad esempio, nella società e, uh, sotto forma di, di una nuova uh, costruzione soggettiva, ma rimangono, rimangono tali. E quindi risulta um, difficile in questo gesto osservare una produttività e eh, un'efficacia un trasformativa eh, performativa ecco potremmo anche dire del, del potere so precisely with respect to these infamous men and women power rather appears to encounter its limits something that lies outside it and which it cannot successfully fully grasp it might wish to be productive It might wish to transform and reform, to incite and instigate, but all it manages to do is supervise and spy on, prohibit and punish. We do not get any response, any evidence of the response of the infamous men. They barely ever speak or act. They are merely spoken of and acted upon by power that really does nothing positive to them. Sì, ecco, quindi di nuovo la questione del limite del potere che pare scontrarsi con qualcosa che non riesce a modificare e che è esterno, esterno eh, adesso. Quindi questi soggetti parlano, eh, agiscono, eh, il, il potere gestisce questi, um, eh, quest, questi atti, però in realtà non vi è, non vi è una, una, forza, una forza creatrice. But we should not infer from this absence of information a simple passivity of the infamous men and women. Yes? Rather than simply be affected, constructive, or produced by power, the infamous men obviously did something that posed a certain danger or a threat. Otherwise, there would be no reason to capture and confine them in the first place. 
So even if we know nothing about what those people were, as Foucault says, in their free state, we should not infer from this, as Foucault occasionally seems to do, that their very existence somehow depends on their relation to power. Ecco, quindi se adesso proviamo a metterci dall'altra parte de della medaglia e ci, uh, ci, ci interroghiamo su chi effettivamente siano uh, questi, um, questi uomini infami e su come uh, siano stati influenzati, influenzati dal potere, ecco, sembra che vi sia una, un, potremmo dire, una soggettività che, uh, che non è per niente passiva, quindi eh, vi è una tensione tra un'apparente uh, passività o limite del potere che si scontra invece con qualcosa che lo precede uh, e che ha una sua, un, un, una sua rilevanza, eh, forse potremmo dire ontologica, ma vedremo. So, when we recall the words with which Foucault began, lightning existences, or on another occasion he speaks of lives which are as though they hadn't existed. This is obviously only because of the temporal distance that separates us from these existences. Yes? So the clash with power was a contingent misfortune as a result of which we managed to know at least a little bit about the lives of those men and women. There were many others who did not clash with power and therefore became truly infamous. They enjoyed the absolute absence uh, of fame. But our non-knowledge of those existences appears a small price to pay for their avoidance of any encounters with power. Even if we know nothing at all about them, it would de be definitely be preposterous to infer from this their non-existence. Yeah, I guess you can keep yeah. going and then I absorb this in the next slide. But, uh, When it comes to Foucault's argument, he at times appears to be so fascinated by the discourse of power, however minimalist it is in this essay, that he appears willing to grant it the kind of omnipotence that is actually able to render things real or unreal. So this final quotation uh, on this slide, I would just emphasize uh, a number of words here that uh, are definitely hyperbolic. So they exist now only, only, through the few terrible words which were destined to render them unworthy for always in the memory of men. And chance had wished it be these words and only these words which are still extant. Their coming back into the real now happens in the same form according to which they were driven out of the world. It is useless to seek another visage for them, to surmise another grandeur in them. They are no more, okay? They are no more than that by which it was wished to destroy them, neither more nor less. Ecco, allora facciamo un esperimento mentale, possiamo pensare a tutte le vite degli uomini infami uh, che non sono state uh, illuminate dal, dal, dal potere. E qui ci ritroviamo di fronte a, 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 a una sconfinata, a una sconfinata a uno sconfinato orizzonte di, 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 diverse, di diverse esistenze eppure a fronte uh, di, 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 di questo universo Foucault è interessato al contrario solamente in una piccola parte in una piccola parte di queste vite le vite illumina infami illuminate dal potere che diventano reali proprio perché è il potere che le crea ma allora ci si può chiedere dove sia l'onnipotenza del potere dal momento che il potere ha, ha controllato da un certo punto di vista solo una parte minima di tutte le esistenze che, 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 sono, eh, che si sono eh, succedute nel corso della storia e che sono largamente superiori, no? eh, potremmo dire qualitativamente e quantitativamente rispetto al, al, a, a quello che Foucault ritiene essere l'onnipotenza e l'onnipresenza del, del potere. Now, there are of course clear practical limits to try to, to try to seek another visage for those victims of power, given again the temporal distance that separates them from us. 
but seems, it seems hardly legitimate also to extend those practical limits to something like an almost ontological claim about the being of infamous men being neither more nor less than the terrible words meant to destroy them. Those terrible words, moreover, are not, as Foucault says, their proper infamy. In fact, the proper infamy is what those individuals unfortunately did not gain, and it was rather enjoyed by those who escaped all encounters with power. But in contrast, the lives that we read about in Foucault's uh, essay describes those who missed their chance to be infamous and works the, instead according some minimal doses of ill fame, which actually does nothing to amplify or lessen their degree of existence. They do not come back into the real because they never left the real, and there's always more to their existence than the measures, the terrible words or measures intended to destroy them. Yeah, uh, you, you can go on, uh, keep going. So the key point here is that the fact that our knowledge of these lives, those lightning existences, is minimal, does not entail that those lives were minimal as well. Epistemological limits on our knowledge, including the self-evident practical ones, are not the limits on being. So the, in the return of the infamous men into discourse is not the same as their coming back into the real. Their real being both precedes and exceeds our knowledge of them, both the knowledge produced in police dossiers and the secondary knowledge produced by Foucault's analysis of these dossiers. Knowledge addresses the being of beings, but it cannot endow beings with being any more than it can deprive them of it. Ecco, quindi di nuovo, se adesso ritorniamo a, alle vite che vengono registrate dal potere, vi è molto di più uh, in quelle vite rispetto a quello che il potere ha, ehm, ha, ha illuminato di esse. Se quindi per Foucault è proprio questo gesto del potere che costruisce questi soggetti, beh, forse dovremmo chiederci qual è la, la, la validità di questo gesto dal momento che uh, uh, de, dell'essere di questi esseri Uh, l'essere di questi esseri è uh, largamente um, più, uh, più ricco di quanto, di quanto ci, è dato, ci, è dato, ci è dato sapere, conoscere. So, instead, what Foucault's analysis uh, performs here is a move that perhaps could be traced back to Foucault's earlier work on the archaeology of knowledge, in which uh, uh, Foucault defined discourse as systematically producing the objects of which it speaks. Yes, that's a phrase from early on in the archaeology of knowledge. So the objects in question are then the effects of discourse. They depend on it for their very being and not simply for our knowledge of it. So according to this perspective, the infamous men become what they are at the moment and only at the moment of their clash with power that is recorded in the governmental documents. The more extreme, if we follow this logic to the extreme, we could say that only that which has been noted in the governmental documents can be said definitively to exist. If discourse produces the objects of which it speaks, then in order to identify and assure oneself on the, of the existence of the object, one must find <coughs> evidence for its existence in discourse. Quindi, che cos'è il costruttivismo governativo di Foucault da questo punto di vista? Beh, secondo Foucault, il costruttivismo eh, governativo, come eh, viene tracciato nella, ehm, in un testo fondamentale di Foucault come l'archeologia della conoscenza è ciò che produce sistematicamente gli oggetti di cui parla. Però a quanto pare sembra che le cose siano un po', un po più complicate perché se secondo Foucault queste esistenze entrano nel reale nel momento in cui sono oggetto del, del potere sembra invece che uh, questo, questo, questo potere riesca a cogliere solamente una uh, piccola parte di ciò che in realtà eh, esiste e sussiste e di nuovo la, la, la descrive in maniera 
è puramente negativa, senza un atto di reale, di reale creazione del reale stesso. Quindi gli oggetti eh, in questione eh, non possono essere ridotti a, 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 a puri effetti del discorso, del discorso stesso. All right. I do not mean to say that this is, as it were, Foucault's definitive position, because Foucault, of course, said many things, including also in the archaeology of knowledge and also on the definition of discourse, something rather different. Yes, so on the one hand, we have this very strongly constructivist thesis, discourse systematically produces the objects of which it speaks. On the other hand, there is an equally famous definition of discourse by Foucault, which goes as follows. Marco, this is not in the slides, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, Deviation, sorry. Uh, discourse, says Foucault, is constituted by the difference between what one could say at any given period according to the rules of grammar and logic and what is actually said. There's nothing here about producing any objects. As a matter of fact, the difference between what one could say and what is actually said is precisely a negative operation. You cut off certain possible statements ending up with a field of real statements and those are produced according to certain rules. If we want to focus on those rules, we can, of course, proceed to Foucault's lecture, The Order of Discourse, where he identifies those rules as belonging to three groups, exclusion, rarefaction, and restrictions. Three very negative words. Nothing here about producing any objects. Discourse is constituted by limiting, imposing limits on what one can say. Never about inciting speech or enabling speech. Uh, etc., etc. So there's only a particular strand of Foucault that I'm talking about here and kind of uh, using as, uh, as a target. But of course, this is the particular strand of Foucault's approach, which is very much widespread in the kind of post Foucauldian studies uh, of, so let's say, governmentality, yes, as well as biopolitics, that in my discipline, where I come from in political science, has been perhaps most. Widespread. Ecco, quindi l'operazione che qui si tenta di fare non è di ridurre la complessità del pensiero di Foucault a questa interpretazione. Chiaramente il pensiero di Foucault è estremamente ricco e quindi forse questa critica potrebbe essere meglio messa a fuoco a partire da quello che è oggi Foucault nella letteratura delle um, eh, scienze umane e sociali uh, che si serve del suo lavoro per, per studiare i contemporanei effetti di potere perché uh, se questa letteratura ha fatto come uh, pilastro uh, portante um, cifra costitutiva del pensiero di Foucault l'idea di produttività del potere in realtà per Foucault uh, le cose sono, sono più complesse e qui vale la pena ricordare uh, tre eh, parole chiavi che eh, Foucault ehm, eh, utilizza eh, che sono um, eh, the word distinction exclusion, exclusion rarefaction, and and restriction. And restriction quindi restrizione um, distinzione esclusione e rarefazione quindi secondo Foucault queste, queste parole chiavi che Foucault utilizza per descrivere le operazioni, uh, le pratiche discorsive sono, uh, hanno una caratura uh, chiaramente negativa, quindi di, di registrazione piuttosto che di creazione. Quindi eh, questo intervento è volto a, a far emergere uh, criticamente la complessità del, del, pensiero, del pensiero di Foucault piuttosto che criticarlo direttamente, ma è senza dubbio una critica a un certo modo molto in voga di, di interpretare Foucault oggi. So this constructivist strand of uh, Foucault that uh, I kind of traced in the essay on the infamous men, I propose to term this approach governmental constructivism to dif differentiate it from the idea of social constructivism because it is not any kind of discourse obviously that produces the object of which it speaks. I can have a discourse on the pencil, but I definitely cannot produce the pencil no matter how many times I talk about this. So the constructivist powers are usually reserved for some very specific kinds of the agents of discourse, usually governmental agencies, not necessarily restricted to the state. And to this 
version of governmental constructivism, I would like in this talk to oppose a certain kind of realism. Ecco, quindi uh, prendendo come punto di riferimento l'idea di um, costruttivismo sociale, quando uh, si ha a che fare con il pensiero di, eh, di Foucault, l'approccio che considera um, la produttività del potere come assolutamente uh, essenziale nell'opera di Foucault e secondo la quale è il discorso che crea i suoi oggetti, quindi Sergei ha fatto l'esempio appunto della penna, quindi il discorso sulla penna non crea la penna in quanto tale, ma coloro che invece tendono a radicalizzare questo approccio, ecco proprio sulla scorta di un termine già chiaro nella letteratura che è quello di so, ehm, eh, costruttivismo sociale, Sergei appunto propone di parlare di... Um, Uh, costruttivismo uh, governamentale per descrivere questo, qu questo approccio uh, all'interno della letteratura fulcoltiana e che si può anche rintracciare in alcuni testi di Foucault e vuole contrastare questo approccio con un altro approccio che um, do you think I'll ask you this that the, the realism that you are proposing somehow belongs to Foucault itself so can be found in some instances of uh, the Foucauldian thought or is something that is completely alien to it um, because we can discuss, discuss this later it's not, okay. a, not exactly Quindi, very uh, relevant lasciamo la sorpresa alla fine il punto è che a questa a questa idea di costruttivismo, eh, secondo Sergei, si deve, oper si deve eh, proporre un'idea di realismo che, come vedremo, può essere almeno in parte eh, ricondotta ai lavori di Foucault, immagino. Yes, well, uh, in the uh, tradition in, in which I was educated and in many ways continue to dwell in, any reference to realism usually makes people nervous and defensive. So this is probably because any reference to realism immediately brings up two approaches that I would like to kind of rigorously distinguish myself from. On the one hand, the epistemic realism, and on the other hand, political realism. So the epistemic realism that affirms or tries to affirm the correspondence of our knowledge of the real with the real itself, obviously suffers from numerous problems, most importantly the fact that knowledge can only correspond to knowledge and not to the real itself. So, maybe I stop. so va detto che il, il termine realismo è un termine di per sé problematico e che uh, è assolutamente alieno alla tradizione dalla quale Sergei, Sergei proviene e quindi ne vuole eh, qui chiarificare l'uso proprio per non ricadere in due eh, tipologie di realismo che vanno eh, assolutamente contrastate e la prima è il, il realismo epistemico uh, che uh, fa eh, diciamo di, di, l'idea di corrispondenza quindi uh, è la conoscenza del reale coincide con il reale stesso. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, political realism is in many ways just a version of epistemic realism which prescribes policies on the basis of what it claims the reality of politics consists in. Very often this reality of politics is a very crude caricature, uh, but in any case this is uh, the sole legitimacy that uh, political realism can claim. Ecco, e quindi l'altra forma di realismo che in realtà non è uh, completamente svincolata dalla prima ma può essere interpretata come una sua manifestazione con formazione politica è proprio quella del realismo politico che uh, sulla base dell'idea di corrispondenza, di verità come corrispondenza produce delle istanze normative per cui la politica deve conformarsi uh, normativamente a ciò che il reale chiaramente è. So because of those two realisms that are so problematic, we need to proceed slowly with any kind of alternatives, right? So taking baby steps. So what I want to propose is a minimalist version of ontological realism that perhaps is closest to what Graham Harman once called infra-realism. The starting point of which is simply that the real is not identical 
to our knowledge of it, but both precedes and exceeds it. Which means that whatever exists cannot be, for that reason, solely the effect of discourse that produced reality by speaking about it, and discourse can therefore not be the sole pathway into reality, and reality does not simply serve to manifest and glorify the productivity of power, but also poses limits to what power can actually achieve. Ecco, allora, quando si approccia la questione del realismo, aggiungo io da una prospettiva critica, bisogna muoversi con, con i piedi di piombo, proprio per essere certi di non ricadere in queste due eh, conformazioni del realismo che in realtà poi possono essere ridotte a due istanze di una stessa, di una stessa idea. E muoversi con i piedi di piombo, piombo significa riconoscere una sorta di realismo minimo, quindi un'idea di indipendenza della realtà dai discorsi. E questa idea può essere uh, almeno in parte rintracciata nel lavoro di, uh, qui aggiungo, di uh, autori che uh, vengono comunemente categorizzati nella uh, famiglia del realismo uh, speculativo. Eh, come eh, eh, Arman eh, eh, è proprio con l'idea semplicemente di dire che un, un, una certa dose seppur minimale di realismo ovvero un'idea che c'è qualcosa che precede e cede i discorsi è necessaria eh, sia da un punto di vista epistemico che politico so the, the starting point then of this approach Uh, would, be, would be putting in question the effectivity or productivity of governmental discourse. So, governmental constructivism presupposes that governmental discourse is accessible to us by documents or some other official texts, possess a certain efficacy that the intentions declared in them are at least ventured to be implemented in practice and that at least some of those intended effects are in fact attained. Yet, Can all of these assumptions be taken for granted? So if we recall another famous work by Foucault, Discipline and Punish, the aim of disciplinary power, according to Foucault, was famously to produce docile bodies. Yet were the bodies captured in prisons and other disciplinary apparatuses docile or not? Ecco, quindi, pensiamo all'idea di... Um eh, proposta da Foucault in sorvegliare e punire ad esempio eh, su, su, su uh, gli uomini eh, docili. Allora il, il punto è chiedersi se effettivamente questi soggetti poi eh, siano stati uh, eh, creati o perlomeno trasformati eh, dal potere secondo i dettami che il potere cercava di imporre, di imporre su di loro e probabilmente non è il caso che questo sia, sia avvenuto. So, on some occasions, at least in, in Discipline and Punish, Foucault seems to answer this question in the affirmative. Yes, so, for example, a good quotation illustrating the kind of constructivist viewpoint in, in the extreme way. It is not that the beautiful totality of the individual is amputated, repressed, altered by our social order. It is rather that the individual is carefully fabricated in it, according to a whole technique of forces and bodies. But on the other hand, Foucault obviously knew very well that uh, all of these practices and disciplinary structures such as prisons, factories, schools, etc., etc., were not successful in rendering the inmates docile or even law-abiding. Ecco, quindi c'è un'ambiguità un nei testi di Foucault perché da, da un certo punto di vista parla proprio di fabbricazione, no? questi, questi uh, soggetti che sono fabbricati dal, da, dal potere, quindi qui vi è una chiara eh, manifestazione di quello che Sergei chiama il costruttivismo governamentale, ma dall'altra parte Foucault eh, riconosce che queste pratiche discorsive Uh, e, e questi regimi di potere che venivano istituzionalizzati nelle scuole e nelle prigioni in realtà non erano in grado di rendere i soggetti veramente docili e quindi qui di nuovo uh, emerge qualcosa di diverso rispetto a un uh, costruttivismo uh, di tipo radicale. Now everything depends upon how we interpret this failure because one could interpret it 
in a manner which I admit is quite banal, boring, and a little bit sad. One could say that, well, prisons and other disciplinary structures do not succeed in rendering the subject docile. They fail. However, there's another strategy, and that's the one that became perhaps more prevalent, both in Foucault and after Foucault. And the argument here is that while prisons might have failed in rendering the inmates docile, they nonetheless produced a series of unintended effects in reality that ensured their continued presence in our societies. So the failure can then be reinscribed as part of the functioning of the prisons themselves. Is not the supposed failure of the prison a part of its functioning? Asks Foucault, no doubt, rhetorically. So while prisons clearly failed in reforming individuals, they still functioned as, for example, again to recall Foucault's analysis, a useful milieu for employing informers, provocateurs, as well as providing lots of knowledge on which the social sciences could then be founded, etc., etc. So what does this mean? Yes, on the one hand, we say that disciplinary power fails, or fails for the most part. But on the other hand, you could say that disciplinary power does not simply not fail, but it succeeds far beyond the original site in which it is applied. So rather than temper the thesis about the productivity of power, it can now be spread practically limitlessly because the unintended effects can be located absolutely anywhere and traced perhaps with tenuous connection to the original aspirations of power. Ecco, quindi come interpretare questo fallimento del potere nel creare ciò che voleva creare? Vi è sicuramente un'interpretazione, un potremmo dire, ovvia, ovvia, ovvia e, 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 e banale, di, di, un puro, di, un puro, di una pura incapacità del potere di raggiungere ciò che si era prefisso, ma da, da, un, da un altro punto di vista si potrebbero prendere in considerazione questi effetti involontari del potere, cioè ciò che il potere nel creare quello che voleva creare fallendo in questo tentativo in realtà crea e come questi eventi, come questo fallimento crea una, uh, uh, un, un, una realtà che non coincide con ciò che il, 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 il potere si era, si, era proposto, si era proposto di fare e quindi ecco come, come eh, concettualizzare questa, questi, questi, effetti, questi effetti involontari di realtà and the same extension of productivity yes, beyond its original domain can be seen uh, in post Foucauldian uh, governmentality studies for example the very widespread uh, field of, uh, uh, of uh, neoliberal governmentality. So there, the neoliberal initiatives in, for example, the promotion of an entrepreneurial, responsible and resilient lifestyle are held to actually construct enterprising, responsible and resilient subject, simply by virtue of positing this production as their goal. But there's usually very little evidence of the actual existence of a single enterprising, responsible and resilient subject. Yeah. Ecco, quindi pensiamo ad esempio, uh, ecco se adesso ci muoviamo uh, dai testi di Foucault alla letteratura uh, Foucaultiana più in voga nell'ambito anglofono che forse è quella che si, che si interessa della questione del neoliberismo e, e se, se osserviamo questo, questo fenomeno già di per sé vago a, sulla scorta dei testi di Foucault ci dovremmo aspettare che il potere eh, produca eh, individui che sono resilienti, eh, imprenditori di se stessi e responsabili però ecco è veramente così cioè il, il, il potere riesce veramente nel, nel suo suo tentativo di, uh, di dar forma a questa, a questa soggettività, soggettività eh, neoliberale da un punto di vista eh, propriamente empirico. Yes, so until I see the evidence of a single one of such successfully transformed neoliberal subjects, I would perhaps suggest that uh, the enterprising and responsible subjects spoken of in these programs might be as far from the actual effects of the implementation of these programs as the new Soviet man promised in Stalinist propaganda was different from the men and women who had the misfortune of actually living through the Stalin period. 
Ecco, quindi uh, nel momento in cui uh, Sergei vedrà uh, il, il, il realizzarsi, di, uh, uh, il compiersi di questa, di questa soggettività eh, eh, neoliberale sarà pronto a cambiare, a cambiare opinione, ma secondo lui in realtà quello che succede oggi nel, nel, nell'orizzonte neoliberale può essere eh, comparato all'idea di uomo, uomo, uomo nuovo eh, sovietico, ovvero questa promessa della propaganda stalinista di eh, creare nuovi eh, eh, uomini e eh, 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 donne che però in realtà non si, non si conformarono mai a questo, a questo ideale di, eh, di, eh, di nuova, eh, nuovo essere umano eh, sovietico. And in the field of biopolitics, this constructivist tendency of overstating the efficacy of power has been even more pronounced in the approaches that took some distance from Foucault. For example, the approach of uh, Giorgio Agamben. Uh, the difference here that is most relevant, there are quite many differences between uh, Agamben and Foucault, is that while Foucault at least accepted the existence of a power that was not productive, Yes, this non-productivity he reserved for his account of sovereign power. So in Foucault, sovereign power was negative and not productive, while biopower was productive of, uh, and constructive is perhaps by my definition. But what Agamben does is completely conflate the two forms of power so that we are able to speak of a sovereign biopower. And he then extends to this conflated sovereign biopower Foucault's productiveness thesis as one of the opening statements of uh, uh, Homo Saka goes, the production of a biopolitical body is the originary activity of sovereign power. So discourse produced the objects of which it spoke, now biopower which is also a sovereign power produces the body that thus becomes uh, biopolitical. Ecco, quindi, ecco, quindi se, se volessimo cercare nella, nei punti cardine della letteratura eh, contemporanea di matrice foucaultiana un esempio di eh, questa radicalizzazione de, del costruttivismo che già si può um, riscontrare nei testi di Foucault la potremmo trovare eh, nei, nei lavori, almeno in certi lavori eh, di, eh, di, Giorgio, di Giorgio Agamben eh, in cui effettivamente si porta alle estreme eh, conseguenze l'idea che eh, il, il, il potere eh, eh, biopolitico costruisca, eh, costruisca i, suoi, i suoi oggetti and those who are the objects of the sovereign biopower yes, get the worst of, the, of both worlds. Yes, they get the negativity of sovereignty, as it were, and the productivity of biopower rolled into one. They are, in Agamben's definition, at once included in the rationalities of power and excluded from any proper presence or representation in them. So, ecco, quindi, questi oggetti, per usare di nuovo un termine a cui Sergei ha fatto ricorso, eh, sono secondo Agamben inclusi ed esclusi uh, da, 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 dal potere biopolitico sovrano come lo, lo definisce um, eh, Sergei Prozorov e, e proprio questa loro inclusione e, e, e simultanea inclusione e esclusione uh, gli, gli rende assolutamente... Um, Uh, oggetti di nuovo del, de, del, potere, del potere biopolitico stesso senza alcuna eh, via di scampo. So Agamben's paradigmatic example of the, the Homo Saka is in fact nothing but an extreme version of Foucault's infamous man. It is a lightning existence which is contained entirely in the exposure to death that its designation as Saka entails. Ecco, allora qui si potrebbe um, suggerire che l'idea di uomini infami eh, in Foucault eh, 
e l'idea di eh, Homo Sacer in Agamben siano collegati nella misura in cui Agamben fa dell'Homo Sacer, o Homo Sacer eh, una eh, radicalizzazione, una figura che radicalizza eh, la, la, la figura degli uomini, eh, degli uomini infami eh, eh, di Foucault. Che, um, can you please repeat the final part? Yes, that the existence of Homo Sacer is a lightning existence of, of the infamous man, which is contained entirely in the exposure to death that its designation as ecco, Sacer. E quindi l'esistenza dell'Homo Sacer è contenuta proprio nella sua, eh, nel suo essere eh, già sempre esposto alla, alla zanato politica, alla, 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 a, a, al destino eh, eh, in, infame eh, che, gli, che, che, gli, che gli spetta. And this hyperbolic vision of power is not in fact restricted to the theoretical discourse and theoretical formulations, but could also be observable in the empirical analysis, for instance, in Agamben's commentary on the COVID pandemic, which dramatically overstated the scope and the effectiveness of governmental interventions and understated the gravity and even the reality of the epidemic itself. There's a lot more to be said about this commentary, but the only reason I mention it here is that it indicates very much the problems with the constructivist disposition, which overstates the existence and effectiveness of power at the same time that it systematically undermines the efficacy and autonomy of any real events, be it pandemics, natural disasters, or any other crisis which are not government-made and hence fictive. Ecco, quindi se proviamo a muoverci da una prospettiva teoretica ad una prospettiva più empirica, con le dovute um, eh, distinzioni uh, del caso, potremmo ritrovare eh, almeno in parte questo, questo approccio nella... Eh, che Agamben propone nei suoi testi più teoretici, nel, nel, nella sua risposta alla, eh, alla pandemia. Eh, proprio perché, secondo Agamben, dice eh, Sergei Prozorov, eh, i, i, i dispositivi eh, di potere, secondo Agamben, eh, costruiscono eh, la, la pandemia senza eh, lasciare che vi sia eh, alcuna possibilità di esistenza di un fenomeno indipendente dagli um, eh, effetti produttivi di, uh, di discorso e di potere che crea, crea l'emergenza tale. Quindi aggiungo, eh, aggiungo per eh, eh, chiarire e anche ricollegarmi in parte a quanto detto prima, si perde proprio quel, quel eh, secondo Sergei Prozorov, si perde quell'aspetto di minimalism, no? that he loses that aspect of minimalism, mm -hmm. di minimalismo uh, del... Eh, che qui invece si vuole, si vuole, si vuole affermare, cioè quel eh, tanto eh, di, di, di realtà che cede e precede i, a, i regimi di sapere e potere. Ma l'alternativa, again, the realist account or approach to biopolitics, would not simply decry biopower as the sad destiny of, uh, of the Western tradition, but also question it as to its limits including the limits posed by the very object of biopolitics, and that is life, of course. And here again, we could find a useful cue from Foucault, from the history of sexuality, when he speaks about power, about life, as a political object that was, he says, in a sense, taken at face value and turned back against the system that was bent on controlling it. I think it is quite a significant statement From, from Foucault that kind of qualifies, at least somewhat tempering, his constructivist convictions. So if life is not merely a victim of governmental objectification or a product of governmental just, uh, objectification, then it cannot only be an effect of power, but must possess a certain reality of its own that again precedes and exceeds the power that ven ventures to control it. Please keep going. You can, uh, go on. But this understanding of life entails a number of things, and firstly, that we cannot simply read off the effectiveness of biopower from governmental discourses, as if 
power produces its effect every time it speaks about its goals, aims, intentions, uh, or targets. So a realist approach to biopolitics would rather begin by demonstrating how reality eludes and resists being governed. There is no pure power and there is no pure or bare life that power could confront. There are forms of power or government and there are forms of life confronting one another with varying results or quite often with no results at all. Ecco, quindi uh, si tratta dunque da una prospettiva realista di, uh, mettere, di mettere in discussione questo realismo e di uh, affermare che non vi sia un, un puro, eh, um, una pura forma di potere totalizzante e che allo stesso tempo no, non vi sia dall'altra parte una, un, un, una pura e semplice eh, nuda vita su cui questo potere eh, agisce o costruisce ma che in realtà da entrambi, eh, da entrambi i poli vi sia una, una maggiore, maggiore complessità che va eh, presa in considerazione. So, for realism, any government of life would be distinguished by two features. It is necessarily limited and mediated. It is limited because life pre-exists and resists the attempt to render it governable, and it is mediated because, contrary to dystopian narratives, government can never grasp life directly and immediately, but can only venture to regulate life in its many forms. Ecco, quindi uh, qui si tratta di um, mettere in luce come l'idea eh, di, 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 di realismo deve eh, concentrarsi sulla eh, limitatezza e mediatezza del, eh, de, del potere. Quindi queste due, due parole chiave sono essenziali per capire come il potere agisca sui suoi oggetti eh, in maniera eh, non diretta, quindi non puramente radicalmente costruttivista, ma in maniera, eh, se capisco bene, uh, in, indiretta. And yeah. Indirect, right? Mediated. And mediated, yes. Yeah. So this double qualification, limited and mediated, is admittedly, it sounds less exciting than the production of biopolitical bodies, but This double qualification nonetheless does not mean that biopolitical government is necessarily a failure, that it always fails or is necessarily in vain. There's quite a lot that can be done through mediation and there's quite a lot that limited government can achieve, as we all know, having lived under it for a considerable amounts of time. So the limited and mediated character of government uh, is not something that resigns us, as it were, to the necessary failure of power. And it is not for that reason necessarily good news, as if power must always be resisted or that power must always fail, which is kind of a strange hypothesis. Ecco, questo non significa, quindi a, a, adottare questa, eh, eh, qu questa prospettiva del potere eh, che è eh, limitato e eh, mediato può apparire da un certo punto di vista meno uh, inter interessante di quella de de della uh, radicale produttività del potere, però in realtà qui è bene mettere in luce che non si vuole eh, per questo mh, sostenere che gli effetti del potere siano meno, eh, men 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 meno radicali, cioè l'approccio che qui si intende adottare non vuole essere una, um, una messa in questione della forza, potremmo dire, del potere stesso. So the fact that life can partly escape power entails not merely that the repressive rationalities become less likely to succeed, but also that progressive or emancipatory projects are likely to encounter resistance and inertia. But I think that this type of a realist approach is indeed offers a more realistic account of why both the best and the worst designs of power fail so frequently. Now this might be mistaken for a form of conservatism, but I would say that this version of realism is actually equally skeptical with respect to those who want to change the world and to those who want to keep it from changing. 
both progressive and reactionary or conservative politics can easily get carried away and end up disappointed when the reality that they take as their object turns out to have its own ideas about changing or staying the same. So realism is not a smug cynicism about politics that political realism uh, often takes the form of, but rather a disposition that questions both the aspirations and assurances of political power, especially as regards its capacity to change our lives. Ecco, allora, uh, la, la prospettiva del realismo non va in alcun modo interpretata come una forma di uh, cinismo, quindi non si tratta di dire che uh, il potere quindi non ha, eh, non ha alcuna, eh, alcuna forza, perché il potere eh, anche nei suoi, nei suoi fallimenti, cioè nella eh, eh, limitata cattura dei, dei, dei suoi oggetti, comunque ha degli, de, de, degli, effetti, degli effetti pervasivi e allo stesso tempo si tratta anche di a comprendere come la possibilità di uh, eh, progetti di emancipazione siano eh, mh, destinati in, 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 in diversi casi a fallire proprio per via dell'inerzia del potere. Quindi di nuovo mettere in discussione la, la, la tesi della produttività del potere non significa Uh, e quindi la sua capacità di trasformare la realtà non significa per questo uh, smontare, smontare cinicamente l'operatività eh, del potere. All right, so where does this affirmation of the limited and mediated character of the power of life leave us with respect to Foucault's original diagnosis? So this at least entails tempering the claims about the productivity of power. How essential is the thesis of the productivity of power to Foucault? In some of his work, this thesis is amplified very strongly, most uh, essentially in the history of sexuality, where in my reading it is done largely for polemical purposes and pertains not really to the questions of power, but to questions of sexuality. It became important for Foucault to insist that sexuality was produced by power, even if it meant making somewhat questionable claims about power as such. But in other texts, such as the lectures on the birth of biopolitics, you could also see Foucault really struggling with those principles, the idea of the productivity of power. In the first lecture, in the kind of methodological introduction, to the birth of biopolitics, Foucault says for a number of times that the objects of biopolitical discourse or governmental discourse have a rather strange existence, a dodgy existence, I would say. The discourse of power, he says, produced something that did not exist and which still, in some sense, doesn't exist. So rather than simply systematically produce an object of which it speaks, the discourse of power produces something, but whether what it produces can be actually said to exist is, for Foucault in those lectures, a rather moot point. And I think this is a much more productive avenue for which to exploring the discourses of power than those principles of uh, productivity that uh, Foucault lays out in the first volume uh, of the history of sexuality. But in the studies of biopolitics and government after Foucault, it is precisely those principles laid out as sort of methodological starting points that became a fundamental assumption that guides and directs inquiries rather than serve as their objects. Yes, so in numerous studies that I have encountered, we no longer question whether in this particular instance power produces anything, but simply start out with the presupposition that power produces things. Ecco, quindi magari inizio proprio da, da questa frase finale che oggi si tende a, eh, a partire dall'assunto che il, il, pro, il potere in ogni caso sia produttivo di oggetti senza invece interrogarsi su cosa il potere in realtà eh, produca. Quindi alla luce di questo e tornando all'inizio di quanto diceva Sergei Prozorov, il punto è quello di comprendere quanto necessaria sia la tesi sulla produttività del potere 
per a, 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 a continuare a, nel, nel lavoro foucaultiano di critica, di critica ehm, di, di, di indagine critica e quindi se um, guardiamo a due testi fondamentali in cui Foucault parla della, della produttività del potere che sono la storia della sessualità e la nascita della biopolitica eh, ecco secondo ehm, Sergei Prozorov la, um, il, il primo testo proprio quello sulla eh, storia della sessualità ha uh, mette in luce una sorta di eh, eh, costruttivismo radicale più eh, nel, nel, nel modo in cui Foucault affronta o è interessato ad affrontare, eh, a manipolare se volete, l'idea di eh, sessualità più che nel, nell'idea nell di, eh, di, di potere stesso. Mentre nel, nei testi sulla nascita della biopolitica in realtà eh, Foucault Uh, e qui Foucault stesso di nuovo sembra mettere in discussione uh, o comunque offrire una versione più uh, moderata della tesi sul, sulla produttività del potere, uh, si interroga su cosa veramente questo, questo potere uh, finisca per, per produrre al di là di quanto esso uh, si, si prefiggeva di fare. Yes, so from a realist perspective that I affirm we can never presuppose the productivity of power in each and every instance, but we can always pose the question of whether power is productive in this instance and what exactly it produces. So therefore I prefer to speak of an occasionally productive power, very much tempering this diagnosis of productivity. Ecco, allora, piuttosto che partire dall'assunto che il potere comunque è sempre produca è forse più proficuo eh, domandarsi da un punto di vista anche di, di, di indagine eh, critica cosa il potere abbia, eh, abbia, abbia prodotto e come, come l'abbia eh, prodotto e quindi eh, eh, si, si tratta uh, di uh, di, di um, mettere in luce, se volete, questa contingenza della produttività, della produttività del potere. E questo, per me, sembra essere l'unico modo di evitare un certo senso di disempowerment che si arriva da leggere certi account costruttivisti uh, in, uh, in politica teoria. Perché se tutto è prodotto da potere, If everything that has been or ever was was produced by power, then everything that will be will also be produced by power. And faced with such a vision of power, there's basically no limit to what it can do, and there is no site, no place in which to stand for us who are the objects of power. So faced with such a vision of power, we necessarily feel disempowered. If... Ecco, e quindi mettere, mettere in discussione questa idea radicale di produttività del potere significa anche uh, dare maggior forza a progetti che vogliano resistere e opporsi uh, a, al, al potere. Quindi in realtà si tratta di, um, e qui attenzione alla traduzione perché di mettere in discussione l'impotenza che il, uh, il, il, potere, il potere produce, però chiaramente qui impotenza non ha nulla a che fare poi con, con l'idea di impotenza e di Agamben. So, as a simple thought experiment, if power produces reality, and I cannot produce reality, I couldn't even produce a pencil when I was talking Quindi se, se il potere it. produce la realtà e io non sono nemmeno in grado di produrre eh, un, un, una penna o comunque nient'altro, che, che tipo, che tipo di, 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 di azione emancipatoria posso avere? Then this means that I am powerless. Quindi yes? sono senza potere. No? And I can only find consolation in resentful fantasies about someday in the future coming to power. E quindi tutto quello che mi rimarrà è un'idea di, 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 di risentimento, eh, quasi formaniciano vorrei dire, perché non, non, mi rimane, non mi rimane alcuna alternativa. And this day of course will never come. E questo giorno chiaramente non mai arriverà. However, 
as I've tried to argue in this talk, this sense of powerlessness with, which necessarily comes upon us when reading certain accounts in critical theory or biopolitics is entirely self-imposed. Because power does not speak or write things into existence. Power does not automatically produce domains of objects or the beings that it engages with, but it engages with, always with something that pre-exists it, and hence its productivity or effectiveness is always a matter of empirical evaluation. It is always something to be assessed. In this particular instance, did power produce something or not? Yes, and what we must take into account is always not simply the aspirations of power, but also the degree of resistance that uh, the objects of power necessarily mount against it. I guess you can move to the final slide and then I wrap yeah, up. This is the end now. But if this productivity of power now in this realist approach is viewed as contingent and not necessary, if power is only occasionally productive and usually not to a very high degree, then the reality governed by power simply cannot be presupposed as its effect. So power does not play with the objects it has created in the manner of some mad god yes, that produces everything, including resistance to it. But power always encounters something that must lie outside it. Power always engages with something which is external to it. And this assumption of exteriority, of externality, is the last point that I would like to press upon in this talk because it's very important. It ensures, among many other things, that power is never all there is. And if power is never all there is, then we or anything else can never be simply viewed as an effect of power. And if we are not wholly effects of power, then we can at least hope that we're not entirely powerless. Thank you. I'll stop here. Yes. Okay, so I guess we can open the floor to, to questions and uh, we have some time. Quindi se ci sono domande, riflessioni, interventi, prego. Sì. Grazie, in tutto per, uh, grazie prima di tutto per la relazione, volevo fare uh, due domande. La prima um, uh, riguardo il tema della governamentalità, non so se conosce un dibattito che si è aperto in Francia negli ultimi anni sulla governamentalità algoritmica uh, di Robbins, uh, che in pratica riprendono appunto il concetto uh, di Foucault traslandolo nel mondo uh, appunto degli algoritmi, dei dati e quindi in questo mondo diciamo, la governamentalità eh, e il potere diventerebbe ancora più totalizzante perché agirebbe proprio su, um, sui riflessi dell'essere umano, sugli istinti attraverso uh, una serie di, di stimoli. Uh, e poi una domanda più in generale. Um... Magari se non ti dispiace, intanto traduco questo. Ah, va bene. Sì. Eh, così andiamo, andiamo per ordine. Quindi, uh, so there is a new um, uh, uh, debate uh, in uh, uh, France, especially in uh, the field of uh, algorithmic governmentality. And so, if we then interpret this radical idea of productivity of power in, re in, in light of this al algorithmic governmentality, we can uh, further enhance the, the effects on, on power, so the productivity uh, of, of power. And so he would like to, uh, to know what, what you think, what is your take on this debate in light of what you just uh, said. È un'altra su, uh, diciamo, su generale, su Foucault sulla governamentalità, nel senso che lei crede che uh, il concetto di governamentalità si accompagna ad esempio a dei concetti più classici del diritto come ad esempio quello di sovranità, perché spesso Foucault è ambiguo su questo punto, a volte sembra che la uh, nuova governamentalità vada a sostituire questi concetti del diritto, altre volte invece che, uh, sembra che si coimplichino. Ecco, Grazie. Eh... Thank you very much. Uh, and so uh, now a, a question more related to the works of Foucault himself uh, and uh, especially the relationship between governmentality, um, um, uh, law and sovereignty. So how do you think that these uh, um, uh, terms play, play out uh, in Foucault's oeuvre? Okay. 
Oh, come facciamo? Prendiamo tutte le domande o facciamo intanto sì, ok. Um, ok. Uh, about the algorithmic uh, governance, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure uh, what specific works uh, the question was referring to, but I would just like to sort of seize upon this question of the algorithm as such. Yes, what government works with certain algorithms, but what are those algorithms of? Yes, the constructivist approach might say that power might seek to algorithmatize, if this is a word, our existence or the existence and operations of the objects of government. But from my perspective, the algorithm would pertain to the power's own operation. It's the government that algorithmatizes its own operations rather than uh, the operations of those uh, that it governs. So you, one cannot, from my approach, from what I've been saying today, one cannot presuppose that whatever algorithm is deployed by government, yes, ends up necessarily governing our existence. Yep, let us take a very simple example. I don't know how widespread this is uh, in Italy, but uh, Spotify, the streaming service. Yes, Spotify works with algorithms that uh, lead it to produce playlists and recommendations in numerous amounts. Yes? I am an avid user of Spotify. I have never used a single one of those playlists or recommendations. I have no idea why on earth they're being made and what exactly do they expect me to do with them. Yes? So those algorithms which are, offer me up something that I, according to the algorithm, might enjoy listening to falls entirely on, on deaf ears because I, I'm simply entirely uninterested in it. Yes? So I can see how it operates and how the algorithm is perhaps deployed in order to somehow limit the things I can listen to or offer me up something that I otherwise would not have chosen, but at least with regard to my listening habits, it simply doesn't work. And maybe this is how other algorithms that are deployed by power actually fare, yes, so that, that they do not necessarily succeed. What, the, what, what is Spotify? Seriously, <laughs> the streaming service for playing music. Quindi c'è eh, questo, questo servizio per... Um, eh, eh? Io sono una creazione di un altro potere. <ride> eh, eh, ecco, quindi questo, questo, uh, questo servizio crea... The, so it creates some playlist to direct your taste, basically. Yes, you could, you could say so. I mean, oh, and and you, you don't use the, the playlist that... Uh, that, uh, uh, that this service uh, offers you, and so in this sense you are not uh, uh, subject to the algorithm, so this is the... In a nutshell. In a nutshell. So, beh, quindi, in, uh, in, in poche parole, che questo, questo, questo servizio che um, uh, me, mette a disposizione uh, musica, uh, con, contenuti musicali uh, online a cui ci si può registrare, crea delle playlist attraverso questo algoritmo per invogliare il consumatore a eh, eh, ampliare, diversificare i suoi orizzonti e quindi se questa operatività, eh, produttività del potaio fosse effettivamente totalizzante, eh, Sergei sarebbe completamente vittima dei suggerimenti di queste playlist che in realtà lui ignora. Quindi questo com come esempio eh, molto, mo molto semplice di come effettivamente ci sia sempre qualcosa che ecceda, ecceda il potere. Uh, there was a second question about Foucault and uh, sovereignty law and ah, biopolitics, sì. but it was so, so very general, like sì. you wouldn't know where to begin. Could maybe they specify? Ah, potresti eh, cortesemente darci de de degli elementi più, più precisi, perché altrimenti poi ampria ampria ampriamo un, un campo molto, molto ampio e il tempo è limitato. Quindi se... Cioè, la, la... Ah, semplicemente quando adesso la metafisica la microfisica del, del potere, l'ultima saggio parlava diciamo, del tema della sovranità in relazione quindi agli altri dispositivi di potere e quindi 
inizialmente sostiene che bisogna che, che uh, nella filosofia politica vada fatto ciò che è stato fatto nella realtà, cioè vada tagliata la testa per quindi eliminare la sovranità, poi anche in altre opere in realtà anche sorvegliare e punire, non lo so, è ambiguo, da un altro punto di vista sembra che i vari dispositivi di potere si coincidano quindi esistano contemporaneamente la sovranità insieme alla governamentalità, quindi un po' del pensiero che uh, l'autore era questa domanda. Sì, but, uh, 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 moving from the, the works on uh, the microphysics of power, uh, the idea is what is the relationship now, to, really in a nutshell, the relationship between governmentality and sovereignty according, according to, to Foucault. Yeah. And what is, what is your take uh, on, uh, on this, so whether uh, governmentality cuts the head of uh, the soul? Okay, yes, 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 all right. Uh, okay, I think that in uh, his lectures on governmentality from the security territory uh, population, uh, lectures Foucault presents this image of a triangle, yes, that uh, there is one reading that he also could, could be read as saying that discipline succeeds sovereignty and then government succeeds disciplines in some way. But uh, in those lectures, he actually speaks of a triangle, sovereignty, disciplines, government, or, or biopolitics, so that all the sides coexist. Yes, and uh, in this manner, he would be able to maintain that the negativity of power which he reserves for sovereignty persists in contemporary societies, but it is not part of biopower or the disciplines. Yes, it is part of the sovereignty that survives, yes, as part of this, this triangle. Uh, and by the same token, he could uh, speak of government as positive, yes, really moving all of the negativity to the sovereign power. So that's an elegant solution, but perhaps an all too easy solution. Because on other occasions, when Foucault, for instance, analyzes racism, he says that racism can only be understood as sovereignty and biopolitics merging into one. So that the positive and the negative become united under the prevalence of the negative. Yes? So we, it's a sort of a triangle that collapses on itself, boom, yes? And becomes a line where the sovereign and the governmental o biopolitical merge with disastrous effects. Ecco, quindi nelle lezioni su sicurezza territorio e popolazione uh, vi è questa triangolazione in cui ci sono i discorsi, il governo e il, e, e, e il, e il potere sovrano e quindi qui c'è una sorta di, 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 di indipendenza e poi si tratta di eh, capire come eh, sovranità e, eh, e governo collidano e eh, tendano a ridursi l'uno all'altro, se, se, se ho capito bene. E, eh, and then the second part, sorry I missed, uh, so when there is the reduction of uh, uh, government to sovereignty. In, in the discussion of racism, yes, ah, and, quindi, and yes, eventually quindi. Nazism, yes. So Foucault says that that can be understood as a kind of merger Yes, of sovereignty and sovereign power and biopower. The negative, the negative and the positive, but the negative is on top, as it were. Yeah. Quindi nei, nei discorsi su, sul razzismo vi è una, um, un, un, una, una diversa, una diversa eh, eh, lettura in cui in realtà la biopolitica, la governamentalità non riesce a eh, configurarsi come un'alternativa un positiva, ma in realtà è qualcosa che... Eh, assume gli effetti negativi tanto della sovranità quanto della governamentalità. Spero di aver tradotto questa domanda correttamente. Ok, I hope I did a good job. More or less for this. I wouldn't ah, know. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah, please. Um, thank you for your presentation. It was very clear and interesting. I have, uh, three, I have three objections. The first two are, are merely philological, and, and, and the third one is more um, into the structure of your, of your proposal. So, um, the first point is about the productivity of power. Um, it may appear in the life of the infamous man that power only forces and oppresses, but 
I think that that, that we can see that that is that is pro, this producing discourses about those men. For example, um, in the history of sexuality, uh, the will to knowledge, um, homosexuality. Um, okay, uh, men have men have always met, make love with other men, but it's only when this practice encounters power that something as uh, as homosexuality uh, is he was born. And and furthermore, it's not only power that that, 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 that produces, but it's but it's also but it's also uh, high resistances that can that can create knowledge practices and and discourses. Um, this this leads to the second point. Um, in Foucault, there's always an agonistic relation between power and high resistances, and I think that your presentation doesn't doesn't stresses it enough. Um, as Foucault says in an interview, power is always powerless, and and its effects are deployed as part of a wider strategic <laughs> situation, where power and high resistances create a, a mobile situation. Um, the third point, um, I think that um, the very idea of at the end of your of your intervention gives an unproblematized idea of of what of of what of what reality is, because um, it can be it can it can be it can be well reduced as the as simple as simply saying be realistic, but what this reality consists in is not problematized at all. So the risk is making our own belief as they were the true reality. Uh, thank you. That was all. All right. Thanks. OK, the uh, first question concerning uh, productivity and, and, and your example. I think that this is where we need to very strictly distinguish what I was talking about between the being of an object and our knowledge of the object. Yes? If you say that power produces the knowledge of the object, it's fine. It's, it's, it's a perfectly you know, self-evident point, except it's so banal it wouldn't be worthy being published ever. It's so obvious. It's very different to say that power produces the object itself. Yes? It's the same thing as we, if we go to for Foucault's order of things in the last paragraph about man that is going to be erased like the figure drawn on the shore of the sea and, and, and so on and so forth. If you simply insert into that paragraph the concept of man, or better, the 19th century philosophy concept of man, the whole thing becomes completely unobjectionable and totally trivial. Of course, the 19th century concept of man is bound to disappear. You don't even need to invoke the face drawn in the sand and any other such things. So, the, it's one thing to say that what is produced is the knowledge of the object, which is always in process. Yes, the knowledge is always developing. Old knowledge gets discarded, new knowledge gets born, and so on and so forth. And quite another thing to say is that the individual is carefully fabricated in prisons, not the concept of the individual or the idea of the individual or the knowledge of the individual, but the individual itself. Yes, so there is quite a major difference between those two. Translate, yes. yes. Quindi si tratta eh, di um, distinguere la, eh, l'essere es, dell'oggetto dalla conoscenza dell'oggetto. So, sin tanto che uh, si afferma che il potere eh, produca eh, la conoscenza dell'oggetto, beh allora non c'è non c'è nessun problema, ma il punto è quando si eh, tende a collassare questi due eh, eh, questi due poli l'uno l'uno nell'altro che diventa che diventa un problema e questo um, questo problema lo si può rinvenire nei nei, nei testi eh, di Foucault eh, sul soggetto in, in particolare in, in quella eh, celebre eh, in quel celebre passo in cui eh, Foucault dice vado a memoria che eh, il, il volto di sabbia dell'uomo eh, verrà eh, forse eh, 
ciò accadrà quanto, quanto prima uh, can, can, cancellato. Ecco, la, 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 famosa, la famosa tesi sulla, su, sulla morte, su, sulla morte del, dell'uomo. Però ecco, chi è, chi è che scompare? Uh, ed è proprio su questa domanda che si gioca la delicata relazione tra l'essere del soggetto e la conoscenza dell'oggetto. Ok, the, the, the second question, if I understood correctly, yes, so you, so you quoted Foucault on this idea that power always unfolds in a wider strategic situation where it is in fact powerless and encounters resistances, etc., etc. Yes, indeed, but that's kind of precisely the point I was trying to make regarding this docility and the failure and success of disciplinary technologies, yes? So Foucault starts with saying, okay, the task of the disciplines is to produce docile bodies. He ends up with a conclusion which is... Uh, patently obvious that it doesn't really produce uh, docile bodies. In fact, it produces recidivists, people who continue to, leave, to live a life of crime and enjoy it. So this puts him at a fork in the road. Now, what do we do now? Do we say simply that power is actually powerless? No, that would kind of subvert the entire enterprise. So instead, we say, but no, power actually has effects beyond this docility, which is not, in fact, attained. And those effects consist in posing uh, this milieu of agents, provocateurs, informers, and providing all of those uh, case files on which sociology can now thrive, yes, by having a set of objects. Yes, so power fails, but it immediately recuperates its own failure. Yeah? It includes its own resistances. Those uh, recidivists now become the agents of power, which without actually actual evidence how many of the recidivists actually serve as informers for the police. Yes? Which is a kind of a strange, uh, a strange claim. So, yes indeed, there's, uh, precisely this wider strategic situation is what enables the productivity of power to, as it were, permeate yes, the entirety of society. Otherwise, if power was limited to the effects of concrete objects, yes, then we would pose the question of Does the object that it claimed to produce actually exist? And sometimes it would have to answer no to this question. But if we are viewing the effects of power as permeating the entire society, then this can, power can be seen as productive by default. Because the entirety of our society is then a product of various rationalities of power. Except we cannot show how, yes, precisely because it... Uh, uh, irradiates in every direction and affects pretty much everything. Yeah. But since the question was posed in English and we have very limited time of uh, time and I see that there are other questions, I'll uh, go back to uh, uh, the translation later if we have time. And now I would ask both uh, the audience and you, Sergei, to uh, keep it short because we are running out of time. Yes. Yeah, there were three questions. There was so the now, third question. Yeah, I know, but maybe we keep this for later because okay. in any case we so, take one question for one person, otherwise we, we don't have enough time. So, uh, uh, Davide. Really um, top problem. Um, my question has to do with this um, dichotomy between uh, uh, positive and negative. And your idea that uh, um, you cannot have uh, production or creation of something uh, by means of negation or by means of subtraction. I think this is. Not true. <laughs> to put it very bluntly. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, think of a sculpture. It is created uh, out of matter by way, by means of subtraction. No? And the same uh, holds for the uh, action of power from Foucault's point of view when he um, talks about uh, normalization. So what, to put it very briefly, what does uh, power produces uh, according to Foucault? It produces criteria for normalization, which is the way how uh, individualization in Foucault's sense is uh, in turn produced. 
And this uh, can happen through negation. Uh, so my point has to do with this uh, um, opposition, uh, conceptual opposition between positive and negative, mm -hmm. which involves also uh, would involve also discussing the um, the different characterization of buying power and sovereign power mm -hmm. in Foucault's terms. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, David. Well, uh, since I have to keep this short. I will say that the distinction is not mine, it is Foucault's. Let's look at this slide once again. How simple and easy it would be to dismantle power if it only worked to, and then it does, he lists certain operations, yes? These operations are negative, yeah, presumably, for him. And he thinks that power is not reducible to these negative operations, so instead of just prohibiting and punishing, it incites, instigates, produces. And in Foucault, you obviously can find hundreds, basically, of juxtapositions or oppositions like that. Obviously, the distinction between sovereign and biopower is precisely the case in point. So I actually agree with you. If, unless, as it were, we are tied to Foucault's text, like this uh, talk was, I see no reason to abide by this positive and negative distinction. I mean, if, taking it to the extreme, you could say that, okay, uh, sovereign power in, in Foucault operates by subtraction, yes? It uh, deducts something, it deducts taxes from you, yes? It's negative, yes? But of course, by deduct, deducting taxes, it is able to spend money on perhaps something positive. Or in the more extreme version, uh, it operates also by subtraction of limbs, as in Germanic law. So instead of uh, a person with uh, two arms, it produces a person with, without any arms. And you could say that this is a productive operation. Well, uh, so ultimately the, dis the distinction can always be uh, deconstructed, but uh, I would like to say that I think that the implications of this deconstruction of this distinction for Foucault's theory would be such as to render it almost entirely unusable. Because so much rests on this opposition between negative, deductive, positive, productive, subtraction, addition, augmentation, etc., etc. Et okay. Yes, please. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your, your speech, your presentation, so interesting and clear. Uh, two questions. The first, I agree with you about Agamben. Uh, Giorgio is a, a great uh, philosopher, but uh, there is an hyperbolic vision of power. Mm -hmm. So uh, the risk is uh, that we, 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 we have not, we are not a, a sense, a historical sense of uh, politics. Mm -hmm. But since 15, 20 years, <laughs> neoliberal powers produce a series of uh, emergencies, mm -hmm. terroristic emergence, financial emergence, mm -hmm. pandemic emergence, war emergence, ecological, I mean, not ecological, but uh, a, Creative destruction, maybe in 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 the capitalism to produce to to justify the change uh, in the in the automotive uh, German automotive maybe. So this series of emergencies produce a new normal uh, way of life. Uh, a new normality that is an emergency. It is made by emergencies. So, maybe the reality, this reality, produced by neoliberal powers, is very virtual made by speech, by, by construction, linguistic constructions, 
and not so, not so realistic. I, I, I have this doubt. Mm -hmm. I mean, neoliberal powers make all, makes all, make all to take reason to Schmidt and Agamben. Now, in these 20 years. <laughs> The other question, the, the, the object in itself, the reality object or subject in itself, uh, distinguished by the, 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 the speech, the, the knowledge about it, uh, on them. Okay, I, I agree with you. There is a, a, a rest, a realistic rest. But epistemologically, and uh, uh, in the point of view of, uh, of an ontology, it's not so, so easy uh, to, to, to affirm the distinction, the, the hard distinction between a, a reality and the, the knowledge about it. I mean, uh, in Hegel there is a, 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 an object of idealism. <laughs> But it's a, a, a great construction. So I, I, I don't know if we can, we can uh, affirm this, this, uh, this rest of realism as uh, evident. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, about the states of emergency, yes? In principle, the, the, the states of emergency or exception, especially the notion of, of exception, precisely testify to the, the prevalence of the sovereign power, yes? They are the traditional prerogative of sovereign power, whose operation is again negative. If we stick to those Foucauldian distinctions, we don't have to in the rest of our lives, but just for the purposes of today. Yeah. 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 It's not a Schmittian uh, state of exception. It's, a, it's, a, it's not constituent. It's not. It's another, another way, another, another form. A new, a new exception may be different from from Schmitt. Yes, but okay. Uh, in this case, I think we would need to kind of carefully distinguish one from another because. If speaking about, let's say, the, the COVID experience uh, in the country I live in, in Finland, there was a declaration, an official declaration of the state of exception by parliament, invoking precisely the parliament as the constituent power. All the political forces tried as hard as they could to immediately end the state of exception as soon as it was declared, because it was quite a problematic state uh, for all of them. And it was a series of negative and restrictive measures, such as it was impossible to leave the capital region of Helsinki. The cars were stopped yes, by police. You couldn't leave uh, that area. So that was a kind of a classical quarantine measures, others the closure of any kind of public spaces, um, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think that this is, uh, in a certain sense, a Schmittian neo schmittian uh, state of exception, except that the sovereign is, of course, the democratic body and uh, it continued to rely on, on public support uh, of its measures. I mean, other exceptions, you mentioned the ecological one, but this is definitely not the same as the parliamentary act, yes, of this t temporary suspension of the constitution. Here, we're dealing with the kind of an exception precisely as a real event, yes? Uh, climate change, etc., etc. It is not a fictive state of exception promulgated by sovereign. Perhaps in the future we will have the misfortune yes, of certain sovereign states of exception introduced in response to climate change. Yes, that might be on the way, but so far we are dealing with it, uh, an event that is not the product of, um, of, of sovereign powers, even though those powers as well as governmental powers might have over time contributed to the gravity uh, of the event itself. So I don't know if I can sort of agree to the 
that this, this is, forms a series of new emergencies that are all the same in kind. I think they're, they're all quite different and could be kind of analyzed. Yeah. Uh, the, the second question, uh, if you could remind me briefly. The object in itself. The object in itself, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think that uh, a number of things I would say in response. I think that it's not a matter of uh, simply distinguishing the knowledge of the object from the object itself as if the knowledge of the object is one thing. Yes, precisely the point about the, the difference of the knowledge of the object from the object itself is that the knowledge is always partial. Yes, when I eat an apple, I have some sort of sensual knowledge about how it tastes, but I do not have the knowledge of the precise circumference of the apple. I didn't measure it because I don't really care. Yes, it's not essential. Now, I also do not know who planted the apple, who transported the apple, etc., etc. There are all kinds of the knowledges, yes, of the object that make up its entirety as essential object, yes, but none of these knowledges in it in isolation could ever grasp the being of the object itself. So it's not that there's the knowledge and there's the rest. There's the knowledge and there's all kinds of other knowledges, yes, that we, that do not cohere because th those knowledges also do not cohere into a single picture, right? Uh, what would be the, the point of uh, putting together the taste of the apple, the weight of the apple and the past history of the garden in which it was planted, yes? as well as many other things, uh, got such as the chemical composition and, uh, and so on and so forth. So there is a kind of uh, um, minimalist approach here to the reality of the object. The infrarealism that I mentioned and uh, as developed by Graham Harman could perhaps in a nutshell somewhat primitively be summed up by saying that we must presuppose that the reality of the object exists even if we don't know what it is. Yes? That there must be something that precedes knowledge. But that is not the same as this knowledge. Which brings me to your question that I will now, contra Marco's advice, try to answer that reality is not problematized. It, it, it is not. That's the entire point. Because we don't, do not know and do not have to know what this reality is and there is no such thing as the exhaustive representation of any possible reality or any knowledge about reality. The question is precisely the presupposition of something that pre-exists, yes, certain rationalities, certain discourses, etc., etc., and not the detailed representation of it. But would you, uh, 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 in line to this um, response, would you call uh, the realism that you are outlining, critical realism. So, because uh, the, the speculative realisms uh, are a, a critique to the, the critical project that starts with Kant. So, would you, would you, or at least they can be read in that perspective. So, would you uh, preserve an idea of, 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 of the critical within the framework of your, your realism? or it's a way to overcome that, uh, that tradition that is also for called the tradition after all? Um, it, it, it's a very difficult question. I uh, do not feel confident enough or interested enough in starting a movement, right? So uh, I don't want to label my approach anything. What I'm interested in is kind of bringing together the two traditions. Yes, the, the ideas of biopolitics and government, which I think are very much hampered and uh, weakened also in the intensity of their critical force by those constructivist aspirations and the realist accounts, such as those of speculative realism, which uh, in my view are insufficiently attuned to kind of political issues and uh, end up uh, operating with uh, sometimes very simplistic logical or hypothetical examples without having any real purchase on the social political issues of our time so if those two strands can be brought together this is fine uh, the names can be given later yeah it makes sense are there any other questions or comments of course so yes so please join me in thanking Sergei Thank you.